Hey everyone, you're here with Mark Batwell at PerfectGardens.com. So today I want to talk to you about signs of your grow room or your greenhouse being too hot. Are you tired of getting in crappy advice from your local hydroponics store? Or having to search all over forums to get advice that only takes you in different directions than solving your immediate problem? Well, join our membership for $50 a month. You get direct access to me. We'll connect on WhatsApp app. And just like this gentleman that started back in July with us, as problems arise, we are here for you. Whenever your leaves begin to curl up like this, and it doesn't matter if it's gonna be on your corn, your cannabis plants, your squash. I wish I was out here a little bit earlier. As you can see this right here, this is just a really great sign. Let me come around. So there's wilting, right? Where there's not enough water getting to the extremities of the leaves. But then there is just clear signs where the plants are trying to tell you that it's just too hot. And it's more of like a light intensity sign. And this is what I wanted to show you right here. As you can see, we have beautiful foods just starting. Our season's just beginning to bloom. But the leaves today was just scorching hot. I mean, it was just way too intense. And as you can see, these leaves are kind of pushing upward. They're kind of like pushing upward saying, hey, you know, give me a little space. I am too hot. I love seeing these signs. When you see these signs in your grow room, some of the things you could do is you could diffuse the light. One of the products I love to use is something called Solex. It comes in 3.5 mil milliliters and I think five milliliters. And it's just the thickness of the corrugated plastic. So many people will use this product just for a greenhouse experience. I actually like to use it to diffuse the light because in Boulder, Colorado, we're a mile up. We normally don't have the overclass of clouds because we're first so far up and we are pushed against the mountains. So when the clouds come into the mountains, they basically just get squeezed out and it just keeps getting higher and higher and higher as you go into Boulder and then as you go into Ned and so on, all of that moisture just gets squeezed out of the clouds and the clouds ends up dissipating fairly quickly, which doesn't allow us to have cloud cover. So right from the very beginning of the season, I'm using this greenhouse material just to help diffuse the light so it's not coming in and penetrating the area I'm growing and causing damage to the leaves. I'll show you another plant actually where if a single water droplet falls on the leaf where I live, it's just going to act as a magnifying glass because of how the leaves are created. It, the, the leaves actually end up getting flat. Here, let me just show you. Okay, so as you can see right here, first off, this is the new leaves. And obviously you can see they're gaining healed. But earlier in the beginning, when I was doing my foliar spray program, the water droplets, when they would fall on the leaf, it would literally create a magnifying glass and burn them. And that was with me already having the shade cloth. So when I started to see this damage and started to see the amount of light literally just coming in and damaging these leaves and and every day the leaves were having that upward experience of just literally pushing away i put an additional solex on the top right here on the left and the right and i kept the center open because i wanted to allow this greenhouse to keep breathing throughout the day and i kept the sides open because that early morning light it's going to come in it's not too intense and then as the light goes up throughout the sky I'm basically just diffusing that light as it gets right overhead. It's I'm allowing it to just come in directly, no big deal. And then once again, as it gets over, it's diffusing the light again. I also threw down the hay on the bottom of the floor because the hay acts as a light color. So what it's going to do, it's going to reflect the light and it's not going to absorb the light, which when you absorb the light, it absorbs the heat. When I put the hay down as well, it also acted as a breathable insulation layer, which was really interesting. The sun will hit it, it will actually heat up the water in the soil underneath the hay, and as the soil gives off the moisture through evapotranspiration, it was really interesting. What I've noticed, it actually will get reabsorbed in the hay and kind of cool off the greenhouse. It's really interesting where I notice the air just seems to travel through the hay throughout the day, keeping the plants cool, 
but keeping the surface of the soil moist, which is absolutely important because without moisture, your microbiology cannot live. And as you can see throughout this process, I'm finally starting to get control of the greenhouse and I'm starting to see production from the greenhouse because early on, obviously we're seeing the plants grow and we're not seeing production, but I could also tell that it was just getting too hot because as you can see, even see right here, you see this guy right here, it's getting damaged, but the vegetable right above it is starting to grow a little more healthier. And the reason why is literally because of a more comfortable growing environment. For some reason, this guy is getting dried out and, and dying off. So as you can see, this plant right here is just growing up. And I've noticed as this plant got further away from this, I would say this zone of heat, right? Because as you can see right here, the light is being diffused, but right below it, even that early morning light and how powerful the light really is without having cloud cover and being a mile high, you'll see that a lot of the fruit underneath it just really was not growing. It kept doing this right here. And, and I realized, you know what, it's because of heat damage. And so as you kind of climb up further, you begin to see the vegetable get developed and the plants getting healthier and healthier. If you've been following me, I'm telling you, I'm battling these dang green grasshoppers all day long. I'm gonna show you how big this sucker is. These grasshoppers, every day get in my greenhouse. Incredibly annoying, don't kill them. If I left that grasshopper in my greenhouse for more than 72 hours, I would begin to see branches literally fall over. This guy will devastate my entire greenhouse. It's so important to get in your greenhouse and see what's going on on a daily basis. All right, let's get back over to the watering. It's so important to walk into your greenhouse on a daily basis, notice the leaves. If the leaves aren't looking beautiful, they're not looking healthy, the fruit isn't developing, it's, it's something's going on, right? And you can't figure it out because you don't see pests or things eating the crop. Well, it could be in high likelihood if the plant is not producing the fruit or the vegetable, it's going to come down to either a disease or some type of environmental issue. Throughout my experience, plants will still keep producing even if you have a pest problem. So just kind of keep that in mind. I've always really noticed the reason why things don't get developed and actually produce is because of actually a disease or a environmental condition. Here's another great example. My pumpkin patch. I wanted to grow pumpkins this year and I knew I was gonna have a very large vine crop. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to take my vine crop up and then extend it out to the rest of the greenhouse. And as you can see right here, look at these leaves. They don't look so good. They don't look very healthy. You don't really see fruit being produced on these. And all the fruit that was getting produced up on these higher vines wasn't really doing much. But now you get it low, you give the nice, healthy environment for the pumpkins to start to produce which they need a higher humidity environment uh, because their skin is soft and without having that higher humidity environment it's going to dry out and it's never really going to grow because of the skin cracking we have this guy over here as you can see this guy right here look at this pumpkin right here right so the this guy over here is is starting to grow and it's right on the hay it's underneath the leaves but this one right here is actually exposed to more of the ground, that darker color. And so, as you can see right here, the ground is probably heating it up and baking this pumpkin. But right behind it, you have a beautiful pumpkin growing. And really, the difference is, is those little tiny micro environments. Same thing over here. Come over to these leaves, right? There's a, it's cool. It has the hay underneath it. We make sure there's moisture underneath the hay so it's a nice, cool environment. And look at the difference in all these leaves. They're beautiful, they're healthy, they don't look like they're being de destroyed. And another thing too is you could see that the plant is kind of shutting down the part of the plant that's not going to produce and it's sending all of its energy over here to the part of the plant that will produce. Just by giving it a healthy growing environment to grow. 
and not just accepting that the plants aren't growing and maybe you feel like you don't really have a green thumb and you just kind of want to give up don't do that keep just spending time in your grow room when it's comfortable for you i like to do it early morning and late evening i try to stay out of the greenhouse midday unless it, the plants need watering and every single day i come in here and i just try to see those subtle differences and i do my best to notice when the plants don't look so comfortable if they don't look comfortable i make small micro adjustments until the plant begins to look healthy thank you so much please like share and subscribe have a great grow everyone